with him that we may understand the shah, the breast, the bosom of Yah. That we may lie in his bosom and drink of the sincerity of the milk, the simplicity of knowledge, his image that flows from his bosom unto Israel. It is not that we have chosen him, but he has chosen us. I am glad that it was not a process of election that he had to stand before the elders of Hashemah, the Melechim, or the ones that are in great power and authority. When he placed his seal upon a nation of people that would fall before anything could be formed. In his heart, it was there from the beginning. Because Yah is the beginning, the better sheet of all things. And he placed this nation above all nations that they would be the epitome of his power, his truth, his love, that nations could see, their eyes would be opened to see the excellence of the one that created all things. That everything that we see, and everything that is not seen, he has created and made all things for his pleasure. He did not make man to be an empty vessel. But he made him to be filled with the riches of his Torah, his mind, with the abundance of the great power that even before he could speak, he put it in his bosom to speak. The language that only Adam could communicate with Omar Ayyam. And from that mind of Yah, he gave every beast of Yah's creation a name. It did not come from Adon's own ability. It came from the mind of Almighty Yah. That's why he commands us to let the same mind that was in Yoshua HaMashiach that mind must abide in Israel. And only in that mind can we bring the proper offerings before Yah. Only in that mind can we bring the proper offerings unto Yah. For the offer of all for the house of Israel. One offering. One offering. That was the cleansing, the torment, that all the bullocks and all the goats all the heifers and all the lamb, the sheep, could not uh, do. And that offering of that dawn, it rescued, it restored Israel back unto the promises, the first promises granted unto them through our forefathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. We must understand that Israel, and once we began to understand the beauty and the dynamics of that. We will need no praise service because everyone that river yeah. accurates yeah. and Tota shall flow from Israel. We will need no man to teach us. We will need no one to instruct us in the Torah of Yah from the least 
unto the Greeks, for it shall flow like a living river from their bosom. I long for that day. And we may gather simply to uplift, to esteem, to sing, to dance, to rest in the presence of Almighty Yah. We see all the manipulative powers of the earth today that are manipulating the minds of the simple and the bewildered because they have not been taught in the excellence of the matters of Yah. It is like a child. The parents expect them, that one, those, to act in a certain way and they have not taken the time to train the child uh, as to the proper mandate uh, that is acceptable by them uh, and this is the way that they ought to walk. So we think that it's going to, in our assumption, uh, that their little minds will be filled with proper protocol, understanding, and wisdom. But our minds are not that we desire. Yeah. Yeah. And so we need the mind of Yahshua and Mashiach. Yeah. We greet you all that have joined us on this Shabbat. This precious Shabbaton, it is a time of rest. Yeah. Yahshua and Mashiach, that we can rest in the Torah of Yah. We can rest in Yahuda, the place where He is to be praised. That is what Yehuda is. And even from the loins of the tribe of Yehuda, those that are truly of the zero, the seed of Yehuda, then you ought to be praised from their lips, their loins among them. And I found a generation that praises, esteems, exalt the creature more than the creator. They esteeming the flesh and they are exuding that above even the very precious word of Almighty Yah. So there is very little credence given unto him. It is all about identity. Yah knows how to identify his people. He has always identified Identify his people. The world has never known how to identify his people. Even his own people did not even know their identity. It was Yah that identified them. It was the hand of Yah that even in the midst of their great uh, uh, delusions and their delirious mindset whereby they saw no way out of their circumstances, he delivered them. He brought them forth with the excellence of his power. Yeah. And we need to understand that, Israel. God. It is yeah. Yahshua that brings us to the light of the presence of Yahweh. Yeah. Without the power of that testimony we have, yeah. nothing. We don't have a damn thing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It means nothing at all. The identity means nothing. The house of Yisrael means nothing. Hallelujah. Without the power of the revelation of that testimony, it must be real. It must be real. Yeah. And that testimony brings us alive. It makes us alive. We are not high, but high here. Yeah. We are warriors. We are able to battle. We are able to stand. We have the life of Yah in us. We have the strength of Yah in us. We have the sword of the Ruach of Yah in us. His, his Torah. His Torah has power because it is operating in our lives because we stand on it, we wait on it, we live in it. That is our diet, the Torah of Yah. We can't eat the dainties of the world, the wickedness of the world, and expect to be strong and to stand in the ways of Yah. We cannot do that. We'll find ourselves sickly and weak, some are dead, our minds laws there is no intimacy there is no relationship there with you not like these liars talk about a relationship whereby there is only this process of giving me houses land cars and things that's not a relationship what man wants a, a an issue what ish wants an issue that her major concern is getting her nails done and her toenails done getting her hair done we need a new car every year we need a bigger house who in the hell wants that i don't want that who wants to be under that kind of deranged oppression uh, that is all about things? Uh, what relationship is there when we don't offer him a damn thing, uh, but we expect him to give us houses and lands and all of this? It doesn't mean a damn thing. He said, like, yeah, I don't want a relationship with that one, yeah. He has offered the excellence of his love toward us. For sure. I have more than food. 
I have more than one change of raiment. I can't wear them all at one time. I got clothing I've never worn. I got shoes I wear every six months. If that. And I need more shoes. I need more clothing to be made. Come on, Israel. What can I do in the dwelling place that I dwell no more than sleep? Sit and extreme my ways and rest. What else can be done? Eat. There is nothing else. Nothing else. I simply need a covering to keep me out of the weathers, the seasons that would cause detrimental, irreversible effects on my physical beings, yes. that I may somehow succumb to that and die. If you're in the cold weather all day and your body dehydrates, then you're going to die, Israel. Yeah. So I brought Ian for his ministry. Just simply to be alive today, there is nothing greater. Our forefathers understood that greater than we do. For he woke he up this morning and he started me on his way. I don't want my way, I want his way. Oh yeah, he has this This day he has. That's sufficient. Yes. There's nothing else I can't ask for. I will not demand of you anything. I've given me bread. You've given me water this morning to drink, to bathe my body. As I made statement last night, how that the industrial complex of the world, the nation, 6.7 plus trillion people, and this spirit of mercantile that is generated by the industrial complex of greed and lust. I call them greedy bastards because they're greedy bastards. Ah, Yamin and I, we were looking at an article the other day where the man's name is Addison. I said, as we looked at the transcript, he makes $3.3 million an hour. And so my Ah, Yamin retorted that that's a wicked dog. Yet they will pay the employees the very minimum. I did not say $3.3 million a day, a month. He makes that every single hour of a 24-hour span. At the nation of the people, we are so gullible that we feed to this insatiable greed and lust. Yeah, yeah. And as the industrial complex, as I said, I brachia for water, that even that I can pay. Yes. That's one of my pet peeves, that is hygiene. And I believe in the uttermost hygienic approach. I wash between my toes, I clean my nails, I brush them, I wash myself. I'm not saying that to show you my nature of my hygiene. I'm simply saying I brach ya for water. Yeah. Yeah. When they're in India, the people are pleading and begging. One of the most powerful entities Corporations are the industrial complex of greed, of Babel, that which has been birthed from her damnable seed, Coke, Coca Cola. And they're begging them that you're draining our water supply to make a damn Coke. Whereby our underground reservoir of water 
it is diminishing being depleted by the seconds not the hours or the days by the seconds they have made coax because of their greed, because of the 1.5 billion people, that they can draw the substance of their wealth, that it is cheaper to buy a coke, which is causing all kinds of disease and irreversible effects. On the bodies of the people, they are sick and dying. The immune system, even in some of the most deplorable conditions, they are able through the passing of that DNA for their children to live. And yet they are begging them, please, you're taking all of our waters whereby the cattle have no water. Whereby we as a nation of people, there is not much clean water for us to drink and to live and yet this beast it is the spirit of the beast for when Yah went through Misraim he caused the waters to be turned into blood and they're turning the people the blood the life is in the blood they're causing the most important life substance the hemoglobe of the blood and the life structure of the blood to be destroyed and attacked by this damnable wicked greed. That is what a beast love, doesn't it? Yes. The beast love blood. The lion is not stretching for berries. The bear may be an omnivora, but the bear loves the appetite of a carnivora. A meat, the substance of meat. The shark is not hunting for some kind of clothing material to eat. It loves meat. It loves large game. The lion loves meat. And it loves the blood above all things. We can see how this beast man, it draws the blood, the life. There is no power of the life of the dam of Yahshua saturated among the nation of Israel today. Well, I will continue on the course that we have begun eight weeks ago, believe me. And I'm going to finish this in Yah's time. No one is going to circumvent me. No circumstances, no situations will cause me to be abated, to slow down, to stop in this process. It is the nature of the beast to love blood. We're talking about the most ferocious beast. We're not talking about cow, sheep, and goats. We're talking about the true identity of a beast. And we would, as even her short son, he walks around as Torah says, as, not he is, but as. He has this superficial disposition. He walks around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, whom he may consume, whom he may take the life exact, the life out of that individual. And it is a mind that has gone forth an agenda to exact, take out, to destroy, to ruin, to mark it the testimony. You're sure Hamashiach is not on the minds today. You're sure it's not on the mind of the lion, of the Siberian lion, the Siberian tiger. He is not on the mind of the beast. And we see the spirit of this beast as her mark, her oath, will be based upon her religious principles. We can see throughout the Torah that Yah warned it, Yisra'ah, when you go into the land, when you pass through the land of the heathens, of the Ho'em, the nations, 
that are not of the birthright of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. He says, I do not want you to ulama, to be taught, to learn the ways of the heathen. And if you find the abominations in that land, but I've given you power to rule, destroy them all. And so by her manipulative power of her religious uh, sensations, that we're given over unto that she is a beast we must understand. And through this principle of government of gain and greed, uh, through the power of a capitalist system to captivate, to capitalize, to seduce, to draw, to bring a nation under bondage, that is what she does. And her strength is her ability of her mercantile. That is the power of Babel. And the mind today it is established by its own religious rights. There is such diversity. Ya is ichats. And the Torah, the Torah, the way of government, it is the same to every true Yisraelite. There is no room to interpret it. He gave us men that were free from the expectation of man. He ordained one tribe known as Livia that they would be the orchestrators uh, to establish, to lay out, to interpret uh, the very finite judgment of Torah. Yes. So the enemy saw his occasion through this beast nature to cause one to have greed, to cause this mind to be established that hate. Yeah, it becomes a prey. It becomes a mind that is smart, a mind that is full of stench. Yeah. And every kind of vile offering there is, it offers up. But it's not an offering unto Almighty God. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I want to continue this week, God's will, on the mark, the oath of man and the beast and man. But I want to bring out a particular today, the abomination, the Tu'eba, that makes shape, form, that that, the mind, the nation, the land becomes Yishomach, uh, becomes desolate. That there is no power of life, no strength, no constitution. There is something that calls that. And if we as a nation of people do not understand, if our eyes are not open, then woe unto us. That is why our prayer must be until we have the fullness of the power of the Ruach of Yah until the latter end, until the last days, the kids, the last of the Akharith, until the power of his Ruach HaKodesh is poured out in a way that truly we will be led into all Torah obligations and all Torah understanding until we have the fullness of the Ruach. He has poured out the Ruach upon Yisraya in measures. The Ruach was poured out upon Yeshua HaMashiach without measures. He did not sin. He did not defy her. Yeah. And it is because of our blatant disobedience uh, whereby the fullness of the power of Yah has not come. And he has Micaiah, the Melach, that stands for Yisrael and the Melachim around those uh, that fear Yah to what? It is only through the great trial of great Sarah whereby we shall be in a strait where there is no other way to turn than the fullness of that power when Micaiah shall be removed out of the way. He that will strain and withhold the powers of hell from being cast down upon us and then the fullness of that power only then 
will be poured out upon those whose names are hot in grave written in the bosom of Yoshua HaMashiach. I don't give a damn what the religious world is saying. Because they are corrupt. And they have corrupted everything they touch. Everything they touch, they have corrupted. Mamas corrupt their sons and, and daddies their daughters. They have corrupted them all. And that's the truth. We must have those that are tah, tahor, pure. The mind of the eunuch. The mind of the eunuch. Yeah. I want to begin here again in the book of Gilyana, Revelation. Chapter 17, verse 4. It says, and the ish saw the woman, this beautiful thing. She was dressed in some of the most prestigious, some of the most colorful, alluring garments, which were of the purple and the scarlet colora, the colors that were bright, attractive to the appealing of the eyes. And everything in this nation attracts the uz and the eyes were given unto that. Everything is so colorful and bright that we're given over unto that. Although you don't need it, the way it is presented unto you, you want it. Although we don't need it, the way it is presented, you got to have it. I will, my friend, do that for the strength of support. Hallelujah. You don't get much of that in this hour, but that's all right. You understand, uh, we hear Yas Imad, uh, we ought to recognize it. You understand, I will come on. I will enter in. You don't have to worry about that. It says she was dead in gold and all kinds of precious stones and pearl, pearls. She has the same appeal as Hashotan. He was the covering, the tapestry uh, of the very Hesse, the throne uh, of Omaria. His pipes or his loins, uh, his ability to sing was beyond. He didn't him in the presence of Yah. He could sing. Yeah. And those that when they allow their pipes, as they would say, to be thoroughly open, I don't care who you are yeah. when they sing. It will move you. I don't care if it's secular. I don't care what kind of song it is. Yeah. Because they have an anointing. Yeah. Yeah. They do not have the anointing of Hamashiach. They have an anointing. They have a gift. For the wicked pulls a gift yeah. out of one's bosom. Yeah. To distort, to distract, to overt to change the mishatem of one's mind, of their conscience, and the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. That's what they do. And we have the power to do that. Don't think that our shatan does not possess the power, the ability when he offered Yahshua all the kingdoms. He offered him all the beauty, all the ecstasy of the kingdom. But you must render one thing unto me. You must bow down. You must worship me. You must give credence unto my kingdom. And from that you shall be my Christo. You shall be my Messiah. You will not be the Hamashiach of God. You shall be my Christo, my anointed one. So he has the power to anoint the voices. That they are drawn unto the delusion of his kingdom rule and power to divert the attention and the mind away from the creator, the one that made them, unto this superficial image that is generated before us by the power of his ability to manipulate the mind. Don't tell me he doesn't have the power to manipulate the mind. As he said unto Hava, he says, look at this. What is more beautiful than this? All of this he granted to you. Why not this? All of this he said you can eat freely. And you can. But why this? Why not? Did he not make all of that? Did he make this? 
If he grants you all of that, why did he not give you the run of the whole garment? But yet he said you can't eat this. Yeah. Look at the expanse of who sits there. He does. Did he create that? Look at the beauty of the brightness of the stars uh, and the greatness of the illuminaries of the heavens. Uh, who could do that but him? Hallelujah. And yet he gives you all of this uh, to refurbish, uh, to redo. Uh, and yet he says you can't have that. He gives you all of this. Why not that? And yet through his subtleties he was able to seduce. A man. That's why advertisement is repetitive. Constantly, over and over and over and over and over, the same things. And you find yourself being allured to that. Then you find yourself captivated with it. Then you find yourself, you've got to have it. And so that's the power of Hashem to manipulate the very mind. He has the power to do that. And He has set up a structured kingdom upon the earth. That it should administer the administration, the laws, the bylaws, by the power of one of the most ruthless spirits that's known unto man. And it is the power of the clandestine power of the beast. You get a prod of lions. It is the males that do the damage. The female may bring them down, but it takes the power of the male. To bring down a 27, 3,000 pound cake buffalo. And they know that. You understand? So it is the power of his kingdom strength. That he has formed nations. As he said to Yoshua, all this is mine. I give to whom I want. You simply surrender your will unto me. You simply surrender your desire, your passion unto me. He said, and I will give you the beauty, the, the, the prestigiousness of this. And you shall be known among the nations of the people. And they shall marvel at you. Isn't that the mindset today? Among the nation of the people. We live in communities of what they call diversity of nations. We live in communities where there are Caucasians, where there are Chinese, where there are Japanese, where there are Mexican, where there are people of the diaspora. We live in those kinds of nations today. And the thing that we want to, we want to be exuded around them. Oh, look at their house. Look at their cars. Look at the way their children dress. You might as well talk to me. And so that gives us some, some sense of prestige. He said, all of this shall be yours. And that is the power of this religious harlot. She is to feed you arson. To feed you death. And she is not trying to kill you overnight. She feeds you a little bit at a time. And you don't even know that she's feeding you arson. When one wants to kill one with arson. They don't just simply give them arson. Enough to destroy them. Just a little bit at a time. It never disperses itself from the body. He began to draw, the molecules began to collectively draw themselves together. And then they began to form this formidable foe against uh, the internal structure or the foe of the blood, uh, the functions of the heart, liver, and pancreas. Uh, it began to dismantle uh, the very components uh, that feed these organs uh, that keep you alive. I know the heart is wonderful to have uh, and the brain, but there is nothing more powerful in the human body and, and many times we see the word land. It is talking about in the physical state, the liver. Hallelujah. The liver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what it's talking about. Yes. It's not talking about this thing that pop the blood. It's talking about that thing called the liver. Hallelujah. That's right. They can keep you alive on machines without the heart pumping. But once the liver goes, you're dead, feel the poison, yeah. feel your body. So they feed them arson, not enough to destroy them. And that's what the enemies do. Feeds us enough to keep us uh, away from the fourth thrust. Surrendering all, trusting you for all, just keep us abated. From the responsibilities of Almighty Yah. Keep us in the folly and the frivolity of our will. 
is a very manipulative and a very powerful foe of hell yes. to create the very image of this beast power and this mind it become void of the essentials of the nutritions of Yah and we become desolate. I will prove that out today. Yeah. I said that I wanted to finish up on this part of the teaching this week. I don't know if I will. I don't know if I can. I will go as far as Yah permits and then I will continue on next Shabbat. I will not stop this. I will not. This is the time of one thing that we begun to whom prepare for the day of Yah, the Yah of Yah, the Yah. It is Yah. It is at a hand span from us. It is within reach. It is upon us, Yisrael, yes. and we must prepare ourselves, beginning here in the lead, in the mind, in the heart. Quit our damn wickedness. Hallelujah. You're not going to present unto Yah these vile, abominable activities and thinking you're getting by. Hallelujah. You're not going to dress anyway before Yah and think that it's okay. You know, it is something that is amazing. I said to my Ishaw as we were talking this morning, I says one thing in the animal kingdom, you will find every female of the kingdom where there's goats, cows, sheep, she will squat to urinate. The male will lift his leg to piss. And yet women wear pants whereby only a man has something that uh, can become erectile. She zips down her pants. What in the hell is she going to pull out? There's nothing there to pull out to piss. She's meant to sit down to urinate. And yet she got a zipper like a man. Something is damnable and abominable with that. Yeah. She zipped down her pants to pull out something to piss. Yeah. Even in the beast kingdom, we see the difference in that. Yeah. Yet we think we're going to persist in our own damn twisted ways. You're going to die in yeah. your wickedness. Yeah. You cannot hear the Torah of Yah and you harden your damnable stubborn heart of yeah. arrogance yeah. and say it's all right. It's yeah. not all right. Yeah. It's not all right. If it was all right, Yah would not show us the very gravity and the abominable stench of it. Yeah. If a woman puts on a man's garment, it is just like two men sleeping with each other. Yeah. If a woman puts on a man's garment, it's just like two women sleeping with each other. If a man puts on a woman's dress, it is just like a, a man sleeping with a damn goat or a sheep. That's what it is. Yeah. You don't have to buy it. Yeah. This is a damn twisted generation. Yeah. And it doesn't give a damn about Yah. We have been trained to exude this damn damn false thing we call yeah. love. Oh, I love him. Yeah. Yeah. One says yeah. that he or she loves Yah and keeps not Shema. We do not guard the mitzvah of Yah. He says, you're lying and there is no truth. No. He uses the word no. There is no truth in you. When you hear Yah's story, you don't harden your heart. Hallelujah. 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 You become complicit with it. Simply you obey it. You form your mind and your logic based upon that principle. And you obey it forthrightly. You may not have the total wisdom of the matter, but you obey it. That's what you do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now don't, Yisraeli, don't get smirky on your faces. Now, I don't like that. It's not the sign of one that is sober. It's the sign of one that's wicked. Don't get smirky or you got this jeering type of smirk. Don't do that with me. I don't give a damn who you are. I'm not one to play with. We're dealing with the essence of our being. This is the power of this beast mind. It does not regard you. I will show you the, the makeup of this mind as I've taught it before. But I want to show you what brings the desolation. I want to show you what brings the desolation. Moving quickly here, Yisraeli. Yeah. She is decked in precious stones and pearls. And she has this golden cup in her hand. And it is mole. It is full of abundance that it drips over. It is full of abominations. 
Benadia in Dibarim says that if a woman puts on a man's garment, it is an abomination. If a man wears a woman's garment, it's an abomination. Did he not say that one that lies with mankind like womankind is an abomination? Did he not say if one lies with beast kind like mankind? Is that an abomination? If I offer up an offering unto her short tongue, is that valid? If I build an image of what I call a God, your damn gods, your Jesus lords, and your damn lords and gods are an abomination. It's a, a, it's a filthy, perverse thing. When something is malignant, as they would say, malignant, or the cancer is malignant, it has metastasized. That means that it has spread, it hasn't it? And that is the mind of this perverse nature. It spreads to the children, the daughters, the sons, and everyone that it touches. That's what it does, Israel. Yes. We need messengers that stand with strength. Yes. They don't give a damn about some kind of financial yes. reward. Yes. They aim in the Torah of Yah to make themselves approved, uh, even in the minds of the hearers. Uh, We must have that. It has to be Yisra'ah. Without that, then woe unto us as a nation, as a people. She has this cup, it is full of abomination, and it's full of nida. Full of nida. Some of the most vilest ingredients. And the only thing that Yah could give us some comprehension of nida is a vile filthy minister rag of a woman. You that are mature in your conscious and concept, uh, it is a damn cortex uh, that you lay on the table while one is dining. Is that filthy? Yes. Who wants to touch that? Would you take that and suck from that? Will you take that and put that in a glass of water and drink? That, that's what nida is. That's what filthiness is. Would you take that damn filthy finger and draw the blood out and, and, and make a soup for your children. Yet you will dress them like a harlot and give them the death pills of hell. Yes. It's wrong, Yisrael. Yes. I don't give, you, don't give a damn if you don't have a dollar. Yes. I don't care what you don't have. There is no excuse. It's either that these things are abominable and the only cup that supplies that it is the cup of the hand of this religious vile beast harlot yeah. that has been raised up in the countries of Hashotan, that his emissaries, leaders, those that, uh, that, uh, that, that draw and secure his parishioners, uh, they must cause them to drink, just like this damned of a whore we call Catholicism. Uh, every day these what they call faithful Catholics uh, will go to this damn whole house uh, and get what they call a little drink uh, or take what they call communion. Did you say right? Yes, sir. How do you know? You say what? You say what? So he was raised in that. And that environment. And so they feed them from this damn cup. And that's what the world does every day. Feed you uh, the drudge, the stench of it. You're not getting the choice. Wine of that cup. You're getting the filthy drudge. You're getting that whereby those that are in the power of supremacy, they don't want. And so they feed you the drudge. You're drinking the drudge. You're drinking the nida. You're drinking the filthy medicine of a woman, the sketch of that, the vileness of that, the uncleanliness of that. That's why Yah said you don't even touch a woman. She cannot even come into the bed of Yah under that kind of confinement. Because that is a flow that uh, it is not uh, a pure thing. And that is what nida, that's the only thing that Yah could express unto us, the nida, how vile it is, or what comes out of her cup. It is filthy, it is vile. Of her zana, her, her, her occult practices, 
of idolatry and forming your minds to do things. This is what idolatry is. It is when one idolizes themselves and say it is about me, it is not about you. God gives us stipulations as to what is abominable and we defy that. He shows us what is vile before him and we say not for me. He instructs us that these things are vile and when you begin to operate in that then desolation comes. There is one thing that is vitally missing from your conscience, your mind, from your well-being. Your affairs are not in order. Because it's not all about the Torah of Yah. We must understand there is a command. There is a, a purpose of Yah. You go to jobs, they command you to dress in a certain way. Yes. You have uniform. Yes. Are we not in the army of Yah? Yes. So we're commanded to dress a certain way before Yah. Yes. You can't go down to McDonald's and wear what you want to. Huh? You cannot go to Hardest and work and wear what you want to. Huh? You cannot work in Paul James and wear what you want to. You cannot go to the local supermarket and wear what you want to their uniform. You cannot even work for Walmart without wearing that which is identifiable. And yet when it comes to the Musa, we don't give a damn. Dressing is important. And that's a fact. I will prove that out in the teachings to come. You still right now. So in this vile one's cup, it is one of the most deadly concoction of arson to kill us in a slow process. It doesn't take you out overnight. It is a slow backsliding and turning away from the promises of Yah. We know upon her mesach, upon her forehead, there's a name that is written. It is called that. She operates in her secretive doctrines of dialogue that is skiing up within the mind of Hashatan and the council of his principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and every kind of sadistic evil thing in the high places, in the, in the rush of man. And so there's a council of darkness uh, that orchestrates or carry out uh, these are the mandates, this is the doctrine, and send it forth. And we began with those that are the supreme ones in high authority, and we do a secretive, we let them know the ins and outs, but we don't let the parishioners know the very dynamics of this power and this doctrine, because they cannot understand it if we explain it to them anyway. So it's not in a way whereby that's it's not shared with everyone. You don't know. You have no understanding of it. It is a form of worship, not just in a natural way, but it's supernatural. We do things in our minds and our thoughts, our consciousness somewhere else, and all of a sudden, as they would say, you're daydreaming, you wake up and you're here. Almost like some kind of clarivology. You're moving from one place to the other, don't even know you're moved. And yet it is in the spiritual realm that, that we're having these clara -vorge. He said she is known as Bavel the Great. And if we look at Torah, we can see how that Bavel shall be made desolate. It's going to be brought down to the dearth, to the dust, to the earth, Israel. She's a land of confusion. She confuses the concepts and twists because she wretch, she wrestles the Torah of Yah. She is the mother. She is the cauldron of Zira where the seed is produced. She is the mother of harlotry of every kind of zana, every kind of, uh, of this vile practice of religious participation and of all of the pit bull, of every abomination of the earth, of every foul thing, everything that is a stench in the nostrils of Yah. I can preach on the abomination for the next 10,000 messages until I die. Because the book is full of it. And that's the truth. I am a thorough researcher of truth. Even if I have to go back into the historical implications of it. I don't want to sit on my ass and clown like a damn jackass. I want to, above all things, to be prepared. Yes, you 
for the people of Yah. I don't want to rest in my bed to see how long I can sleep. I want you to rise and get up and make sure my weapons are right. My shield is polished. My sword is glistering. My breastplate that you sense the very, you sense the very righteousness of Sadiq of Yah. That I have on the Tommy and the Orim of Yah, I have on the pouch. And also the stone that is cast forth your shoe to make sure that my lot is right. My head is covered with yours, your shuk, to make sure every part of my apparatus of battle is right. It's right. And I'm ready. Not in pretense. That we can be taken a little higher today. And the next time a little higher. And the next time. And she has this cup. It is full of abomination and holotry that is in the earth. Does the Torah identify what is abominable? Or is she quotes or pigul, 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 or to Eva? Does it identify that? Yes. Yes. There are nearly 600 scriptures just in the sense of abomination, abominable, abominations in the Torah. We're not talking about the things that are perverse, the things that he hate, the things that are vile. We're not talking about that. The whole book is about this. Yah says that these things, Yisrael, you avoid them. These things are abominable. Yeah. And when you can operate in the right ruach in these matters, then I know that I am the guide of your mind. I know that I can uh, teach you. I can learn that. I can instruct you by my memory, by my instructors, uh, that you will receive the Musa, the counsel that corrects you, that chastises you, uh, and that takes the rod and put it on your arse. All right? Yeah. You can take that. Yeah. And then you rejoice because you know that every son, every daughter that Yah receives, He corrects. Hallelujah. And if Yah corrects us not, then we are bastards. Yes. This is a bastard nation that we live, we live, we live in. Yeah. He's not correcting this damn nation. He is sending the sons and daughters to the graves of hell. They're dying, they're killing one another, they're being destroyed. That's the hand of Yah. I don't give a damn what you think that's the hand of God. They're dying physically. They're dying for any aspiration of God. They don't give a damn. And they don't love Yah, Yisrael. They got this false image and this false identity, what they call the your shock of God. But they're full of hell and wickedness. You can defend them. I'm set to defend your shoe, Hamashiach. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Defend. You can defend them. You can preserve them. Hide for them. Hide them, but I will not. The wicked is preserved. For the Ahari, he has preserved the wicked. Yes. Yes. What I want to do, I know I defined the word depraved last week. But I want to, because there is something vital that you must understand in this teaching today. It's what desolation is. I know that if I ask us all, you understand. We're, we're not even like children. We're worse than children. The other day, we were talking, Sereya, and she says, Papi, I can count a thousand. I said, okay, 100? She said, 100, one, one, two, three, one, four, one, five. And so she began to smile. She's learned something new. She did not create that in her only life. I say, 500, 501, 502, 503, 504, 6. She said, Papi, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So, and so we're just like that. We think because we have learned in little something, we have the command yes. of all things. And so the more she expressed her intellectual, she smiled with this broad smile on her face and said, you know I got it, Papi. And I said, you sure do look good. That's all right. That's the way we are. We think, uh, we think because we have a concept of the issue that we have all the ins and outs of us. Because you read, Yah never told you to read the Torah. Yah will tell us to lahak, to study, yes. to meditate, to allow our minds to be shaped by the principles, the concept, the precepts, yes. 
the ordinance, the laws, that our minds are being, and that we should be a shining light in the midst of a dark generation of people. And our total reliance is upon you. We have not done that. I want to explain or express in the Hebraic definitives of the word desolation. And the reason I want to do that because I want to be God in the book of Daniel now to point out something that is vital of this spirit of this Jezonite. Of the mark, what it does to the heart, the conscience, the being of a man. And when this abomination of desolation set up, you said, in that day, there shall be 3,200, 3,290 days, a period of three and a half years known as the Great Tribulation. A time of Zara, a time of the mind being oppressed. When the one that stands for Yisraya, he shall, as he withhold this destructive power from destroying the identity of Yah, he shall move his hands by the commands of Yah. And he shall make himself known to gather the children of hell to fight against Yah. Do our minds fight against Torah? When you hear the truth that is made so plain, do you make mockery of that? Do you scorn that? Do you say, I, I, I know he's talking to me with hell. You silly jackass of a man. You stupid thing of a woman. You ought to appreciate God when he speaks directly to you. But you have learned the ways of the wicked so well. You despise the correction. A fool despise the correction of Yah. If you reprove a fool, you're going to get yourself a block where you reprove a wise man he will love you he will appreciate you he will embrace you Yisraya, but not a damn fool and when y'all takes time to speak to your damn wicked ways and that has always been the problem with Yisraya, when y'all will speak to the damn wicked ways we rise up in the arrogance in our gava our gayish type mannerisms and here we never progress it's a sign of an unwilling heart a mind that battle it is the it is the it is the senility or the signalness of the beast power that has begun to break you down piece by piece by piece if you don't understand if you don't understand it thoroughly it is best to be quiet you don't show no damn expression you just be quiet man you shut your damn mouth woman you shut your damn visage and listen to what y'all says Hallelujah. Just like the eunuch Philip. He was not a European eunuch, he was an Ethiopian. That's what he was. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, he did not understand when Philip started in the book of Yeshua. He explained things, he said, Here is more. Here's the living word. Immerse me in it. And Philip was taken up after he commanded, obeyed, I mean, obeyed the commands of Yah. And we will be taken up from this mindset when we obey Yah. We'll be, we'll, that's the true rapture of our minds, be taken up from this pillage of pukery and vileness of the beasts, beasts uh, extra net that it, it bushes in our mind uh, and put this damn poison in us. Uh, that we have no great love for Yah. We don't even care anything about Yahweh. Your shoe is not in our damn mind. Hallelujah. Internet, Walmart, Kmart, every damn thing is in our mind but Yah. Hallelujah. What a damn shame. MySpace, YouSpace, YouTubing in it all. We don't give a damn about the Most High. Yes. I was reading an article the other day how that the power of even the Internet, how it, the intrusiveness and how the manipulation of what it is doing to the people. We, we are damn dumb people. We are excited about everything, but yeah, are we not? Yeah. I don't want to get sidetracked, my son. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said, there shall be a period of time that this abomination that makes desolate. Do you all hear that? I did define what desolation, what desolation is. There are ingredients that make our minds desolate. A mind that is desolate, it deserts Yah. A mind that is desolate, it deserts Yisra Yah. 
because the mind wax cold, because uh, iniquity. What is uh, 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 an or of online? What is the iniquity? To explain it in the most simplest uh, of terminology, it is a mind that is Torahlessness. It is a mind that has no ingredients of the Torah. It is a mind that is untrained by the Torah. It is a mind that will not be governed by the Torah of God. Yeah. That is what Ovon Ovin. What about like that? It cannot offer up the pure sacrifice, uh, the pure offering, uh, the pure zabach unto Yah. It cannot offer that. It cannot, that's what we can offer up the pure praises unto Yah. That's what we can offer up uh, the offering of Torah. That's how we can enter into His presence. Uh, we come with this kind of damnable, wicked, dirty spirit of uh, so melancholy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hell no, it's wrong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That's what I sing for my children. Hallelujah. They are silly, but that's all right. I tell mama, leave them alone. Let them run like that. Running, running, running. In your shoes, me. Oh, I'm running, running, running in the name of Yoshua. Oh, I'm running, I'm running. Running in Yoshua's name. Oh, I'm running in Yoshua's name. Running for my life in the Torah of Yah. Oh, I'm running for my life in the Torah of Yah. Oh, I'm running this way. Oh, in Yahshua's name, oh, I'm running, running in Yahshua's name. Running, 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 Yahshua's mighty name. Oh, I'm running, 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 Yahshua's mighty name. Oh, I'm running, 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 oh, I'm running, 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 Yahshua's mighty name. We're full of it, Yisraya. I don't even look at the adults when I'm singing that. I look at my children. Unless we become like one of these leaves, Lisa, Lisa, we're not going to end it. You got men that have no life in them. That's all they're going to do. Look at that. They have no testimony of Yahshua. I love you. That's the truth. You got to hold hell. You run to the goodwill power. You can move with expedience. I ain't taking nothing back. The dollar sale. You got to get to all this. You got to get here to get the sale. They got the sale on now. And somebody's going to get it all hell. They know we're that dumb. They got more than enough. They're trying to sell the excess. Yeah. And they bought it so damn cheap that they know they can't say this. And we will run like damn fools. Yeah. And y'all says unto us, come and buy truth. Yeah. And we don't give a damn about that. That's yes and yeah. That's why there is, no, there is no excitement about the offering of Yah. Yeah. So I turn my head this way and I can see my little ones running, running, running. Yeah. Yeah. They come and look in the window. When they see themselves proud, they get excited. Yes, true. Hallelujah. Run like y'all the way they run, look in the mirror. Then I, I see them and I know how to kick it up a little bit. Oh, we're running, hey, running in your shoes, knee. Oh, we're running, 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 running in the name of your shoes. Oh, we're running, 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 your shoes, my name. Oh, we're running, and we're running. And of course, I get a little excited down there. I get the need of moving a little bit. We don't give a damn about you. It's appalling. It signs his heart. When this abomination of desolation sets up, and the time of the end, and even in the process of our lives, when we have the sense of this most damnable thing uh, in our minds, uh, we know that our end is near. Yes. So when we sense this, we can begin to count the days, Yisrael. Yeah. We can. We must offer unto Yah the pure, the tahor, the zabach 
unto him. Yeah. And our sacrifice, our offerings, our Sabbath, they're not pure. I want to show you this. This is the, this is the mandate of this religious whore. This is the senility. This is when what is becoming seen now toward you. You don't get excited. But what is becoming seen now, they have no attachment or identity with those, them, that thing that they were familiar with. Is that the truth? They don't remember quite well, do they? So it is with us, Yisra'ya. We don't remember the hand of Yah. How he brought me out. Oh, he brought me from a mighty long way. That's why they could sing the choruses of the song over and over. It was not mundane for them to do that. It was not discouraging. They were singing the testimony of Yah's power. He brought them out from a mighty, mighty long way. They could sing the song, Go down, Moshe went down, In Egypt land, Tell old Pharaoh, To let my people go. That's why they could sing that. Because they had a sense of the freedom of Yah. They knew that they were liberated. They were not bound to the shackles and chains. We don't give a damn. We don't give a damn. I said to my Israel, I said, you know what, their dances in Africa and their culture, they never change. We talked about that the other day. I say, hell among this heathen spirit, you got something new every damn week, every two weeks. They got to change styles. They're dressing in Africa, they're dressing in cultures, they never change. In this damn polluted culture, we're always trying to change. We're always trying to be fashionable in the fads. You can't do nothing but put on a damn dress or put on a pair of pants and a shirt. You can't do nothing else but that. Period. There's only one garment that we must wear before you are, And that's the garment of Sadiq. We ought to hate the garment that has been spotted with our damn flesh. Why is it that, Yah says, when the daily offering, when this Zadak is not offered unto Yah, he would have made everywhere. Lift up hands that are chados, the yah, the strength, uh, and berach, yah. Hell, we don't do that, Yisrael, yah. We do it with the false pretense among each other, but I'm talking about in the midst uh, of the wicked. Uh, this, I uh, can't preach that. Uh, the other day when we go out that mention us, uh, hell, ain't nobody lift up their damn hands. Uh, nobody exalted, yah. No one says, uh, berach, yah, hallelujah. Yeah. But hell, we said, how much is that? That's the mind of Yisrael. Yeah. We are twisted people. Yeah. Yeah. We're captive. We have been brought yeah. on the delusion and the captivity of hell. You might as well remember me because I tell you the truth. Yeah. Hallelujah. What's more vital? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hell, we were just like any other people out there. Yeah. Let there be a difference between my people and thine people. Yeah. Oh. I will. Yeah. Hell, the women yeah. want to look like the world. Yeah. They want to show off if they think they got something attractive. Yes, they want to show off their body, they want to show off their hair, they want to show off every damn thing. It's wicked. Hallelujah. You cover yourselves, daughters of Zion. Hallelujah. Hell and the men are weaker than the women. They have no restraint. I'm not taking anything back. Hallelujah. She is my emissary. She represents me. She is my ambassador. Forgive me. Hallelujah. She represents my strength. She represents my life and my longevity in life. That's what an Isha does. For the prophets teach that. Move it. I want to deal with this for a portion of time. I know I'm not going to finish. I got one, two, three pages of scripture. But that's all right. I will finish. Forgive me. I will never finish this. I will take us into a different arena next time. All right? To love y'all with all our mind, all of our love, all of our effort, and all of our, all of us. Show you one like unto that one, to love your neighbor, your real, your real, your neighbor, as you love yourself. Yeah. To love each one the same. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's how you do it. Yeah. You love each one the same. Yeah. That's how we do it. And then I come to you and pretend I love you. And know that I'm a damn thief, and a robber, and a damn dog, a liar. Yeah. Because my heart is not abiding in the Torah of Yah. I am the seed of Hashatan. Yahshua said, you can't hear my truth because you have your father, the devil. He was a liar from the beginning. He was a thief. He was a murderer. He was a liar from the beginning. 
because he did not abide in the Torah of Yah. So we lie to ourselves, we pretend that we are right. We lie to others that we are right. It is the very nature of the beast. It will kill, it will pollute anyone in its presence. A lion doesn't give a damn, it doesn't respect the wildebeest no more, it respect the cape buffalo. It doesn't respect a baby gazelle. It doesn't respect a baby gazelle that has just came out of the womb of that gazelle. It will consume it right there. You understand? It will break that gazelle back. You don't give a damn no more about the adult one or the childish one. And that's just the truth, Yisraya. That lion, that beast spirit doesn't care about that baby gazelle. It's an easy meal for him. Doesn't have to fight. Just sinking those cheek teeth in that beast, it dies. Get that fresh protein right out of the belly. And it will eat it. And that's the nature of a beast. It doesn't care about your damn children. It doesn't care about your damn grandmama. Your damn mommy doesn't give a damn about you, Yisrael. Yeah. We as a nation of Yisrael, the power of our excellence, it is a great ahava that we abide. We live among each other. We take care of each other. That's the strength of our nature. Yeah. While we're in the land of captivity, we, we grow fooled. Yes. We heal our bodies. We mend our bodies. We yes. restore our bodies. And we'll be strong. And we will live for the course of the time. I want to be here when your shield come. Hallelujah. I'm not preparing to die. I'm preparing to live. Hallelujah. I want to be here when your shield come. And the enemy does all he can, just like it was in the beginning of days. Uh, as it was in the days of Noah, they were eating. Why did he put that first? Are we eating in this day? In that fell here, are we eating? All of us are damnly, grossly obese. We're greedy like damn dogs. A dog never gets enough. We're obese. We're fat. We're lazy. We're shiftless. We're sloppy as hell. We have no energy at all. Yes, my God. That's why he said unto us uh, that when I scatter you, I put you abroad. Uh, I want you to grow food. Uh, you women grow. Uh, you men grow food. You gather it uh, and restore your body. Make it healthy and heal so with the time uh, of restitution. I will bring you back uh, into my promises. Uh, the hell the world has taught us McDonald's, uh, Burger King. I don't eat the damn filth. I don't care what no one says. I will go hungry. I will fast. Yeah. Until my show can prepare me something when I get back here. I don't yeah. want the damn fridge fries and nothing here. Pizza, yeah. I don't want yeah. that damn mess. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 We're eating from the tables of demons. Yes. That's why we can eat from the world and these filthy people prepare and curse you, yes. and spit at you, Hallelujah. and you're paying their salaries. We're an ignorant people. Yes. That's why the world's population is between 6.67 billion, 6.8, maybe a little more than that. I think it's coming to that perfect number, 7 billion, whereby it is complete. Y'all said out of 7 billion, even from the beginning of time, it's over that to now. Man is not going to change. That's why when he destroyed the first earth, he saw that the imagination of the heart of man was only continuously evil and if we honestly assess ourselves our hearts are only continuously evil it always spewing out evil damn things and that's the truth to the best of evil hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah only evil continuously and in that day they were eating are we eating today? Yes. We're eating from the table of demons. We're eating the nida, the filthy things of hell. Yes. That's why there is no strength of maturity, no strength of power in us at all. We don't even know how to, Yisrael doesn't even know how to nurture one another. True. I've seen men that are so damn cold, they don't even have the attachment, they don't even, you know, you may embrace, but they don't even have the, they don't have the sensitivity. I, I can tell that in men. I said, oh man, they don't even realize because they, they don't hear, they think they do, they think highly of themselves. And they think they have something that is a, is of care, but it's not. I was saying to Oxymion, I work job that I've never had to someone. I always uh, had a vision of what things had to be done and what things must be done. You didn't have to tell me. 
because I knew that the welfare or the overall profitability of this corporation was by my assistance, my innovation, and my ability to labor without paying someone to tell me to do what to do. And Hillary has given us the Ruach, and it still doesn't even get us. You might as well love me. You might as well. So we understand that when this daily offering of this great praise is under Yah, do we truly praise Him? Or you wait till someone is living in your presence, you may oh, praise Yah, and that's it. Hallelujah. And this is the truth. You're trying to embarrass us. Well, the Melechim, the Melach has reported unto Yah Almighty. Yes. Not well with that we Israel. Yeah. He's a false pretender. He's full of hypocrisy. Yeah. When the being, the sons of Yah, went to present themselves unto Yah, then Hoshotan came. And Yah says to him, where you been? He said, I've been out. You know it too. Where? He said, running to and fro in the earth. You know where I've been. You know damn well where I've been. <coughs> yeah, that's the way he talked. He talks with arrogance. He said, you know what, Ben. You know why he talks that way? Because he knows he has a time. And this is the latter end of his time. He said, what you been doing, fool? He says, I've been running. He wasn't walking. So we're going to run for your shoes. Running. 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 Running in your shoes. Oh, I'm running in the name of your shoes. Running, running, running. He said, I've been running to and fro in the earth. And I am seeking those ones that are wicked, those that are stubborn and hypocrites. I'm seeking anyone that I may devour. Yes. You understand what devouring it is? Uh, it is to consume without any control. Yeah. When that big lion goes on the wild beast belly, and when he gets that thing opened, uh, it doesn't sit there and pull a piece of meat and chew. No, it doesn't do that. It is a gluttony spirit. When he bites into that, he swallows. He swallows. He swallows. And then they massage each other after the kill has filled. And they say, you little ones, get something. I'm king. He said, I'm the beast of the earth, Yahshua HaMashiach. I can make rich, I can establish whom I want to. You know that. My government is going to be established. And he said, you see that one, Yahshua said, you see that one that is Mikhaya, that stands for the Sadiq of Yah, those whose names are written there. Yeah. He's got them uh, under the control of Yah. He got them under Yah's wing. Yeah. And there's not a thing you can't do to them. He said, give me a season. Did he not give him a season with Eob? Yes. Did he turn him away from Yah and all of his affliction? He did not turn him away from Yah. Is he going to have a season with us, Yisrael? That's when the abomination of desolation uh, will be made known. Uh, it is either that we have the power of the Ruach in us uh, and we're in fourth water or we're going to be dead in the trespasses of our sins uh, like we are now in the power of that, uh, of that seal in our minds. We're not going to change. Uh, you're not going to get right then. Yeah. If you're not right now, you're not going to get right then. We can offer unto you these offerings out of a wicked, unclean mind. We can offer that. And we can offer up a pure offering unto Yah, loving Israel. Loving Egypt. Loving the things of our flesh. I want to show you an example of that. Turn quickly. Hallelujah. To the book of Shemoth, Exodus. Oh, I'm going to preach today. I'm going to take my time as the old preacher would say. We've learned about everything but about Yah. Here in the book of Shemoth, in the book of Exodus chapter 8 and verse 26. We know when this was, it was the time when Yah has caused or began to cause the plagues to begin to flow upon the Misrim. <laughs> And there were the plagues of the flies. Can you imagine that death everywhere? The stench of death, maggots everywhere, flies. You, you think they cleaned that up overnight before the next plague came? 
You got maggots everywhere. You got dead animals here. You got dead babies here. And maggots crawling flies everywhere. You know that is some that, that is very annoying, isn't it? When flies are all in your face, in your nostrils, in your ears, in your mouth, seeking for the least amount of noise. It says here in Shemoth, Exodus, chapter 8, verse 25. So when Pharaoh, this mind that is unrelenting, this mind that is unrelenting, but yet he relented. He says here in Exodus 8, 5, it says, And Pharaoh called Moshe and Aharon and said, He said, Go. He said, I want you to Zabach, to offer it. The offering of judgment, that's what the Zabach is. The Zabach, the Zabach. Offer the offering to Yah or your Abba in the land. In the land. In the land. And they said, and Moshe said, it is not right to do so. You cannot offer the offering of Yah in the land or in the heart that we have in this, in this Erech, in this earthen heart. In this stony heart. We need the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, so from that moment on, the way I do that thing, I drop on my knees first and then I go. You understand? Because if I had slipped and hit my head, I may have been in trouble. You don't have to tell me something twice. So I do it very carefully. And I take my time and I do it with, with slowness. You understand? So when I get down every time, it would be the same process. Don't have to worry about hurting myself no more. Relying on my own strength and we are a nation of people. We will become aroused at one another, but we don't get angry with ourselves. We ought to hate your garment that has been spotted by your flesh. You understand? You ought to hate the garment that has been spotted by your flesh and you don't hate it. You hate your ach and your hot. You hate the garment of Yisrael because you're dirty, you are stinking, and you are full of nidah. You have taken that damn dirty minister rag and wash your face, brush your teeth, wipe out your ears, and wash yourself. Their body parts on me, I want to make sure that they are clean. And I make sure I scrub them clean and they are clean. When I finish them clean, oh, they may become sought as soon as I put on clothing. But for that moment, they're cleansed. In other words, we're going to be cleansed and washed by the power of your truth. He must be gotten here. This is where the power of the zira, the seed, begins to ferment in the mind, Yisraeah. Through what? Thoughts and concepts. Our inability, our unwillingness to offer unto Yah which is acceptable. That's why we don't have the urgency or the drive. Because the daily offering or the daily zavach has been taken from the tabernacle. Are we not the tabernacle? Is not our bodies the tabernacle of Yah? Is it not the offer of the praise offering and the offerings of Almighty Yah? So that has been taken from us, Yisrael. And so when that is taken, then this abomination of desolation, because we have drink from this horse cup we have drink from the cup of religion we have drink from the cup of our wicked ways and then our minds have become so saturated we desert the things of God well it doesn't mean that I will never leave you nor forsake you though all these men leave you I will stand by you your sure my friend before the even thoughts, you shall deny me grace. Hallelujah. Yeah. Can I move on a little bit? I'm going to find a place to stop in a moment because I'm tired. The broadcast wears me out. I want to get this man ready where he can do the broadcast. You understand? Him. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so I want him to develop something where he can go and I don't care whether he do it, take version or whatever. He must do that. Listen, if I do this hard school, they didn't have to tell me to do things. I did things because I knew they were right to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I worked as hard as anyone. I went to school full time. I went to college. I worked a job and sometimes two jobs. My house was always immaculate. I took care of everything. I took the garbage out. I kept it clean up around it. I mowed the grass. I did all of that. I found time to work out. I found time to make sure that I could go to the gym. And I found time for my wife. And I found time to do everything. Yeah. 
You understand? Strong and fit as a fiddle. Found time to study. Even taken that book to work with me. When I was a break, I would have my book. I didn't do it. I would find me a secret place away from everyone. I would not like some of these nerds that go before everyone and everyone see them so I can see them with their with their bill. That was not my way. I would find me a place on the outside where nobody was. I remember working at a place and then this old cat that was a bank robber, he realized I was going out there and uh, he came outside one day. I never forget what he said to me. He was a bank robber. He had robbed banks. He had robbed banks everywhere. You understand? He said, you know, my grandmother told me uh, out of that book there, he said that thing there, he said that every verse, every scripture there, there's a, there's, there's a sevenfold revelation. I've forgotten that. He didn't know what he was saying. I understand what he's saying. Now it was a perfect revelation to that matter. And you're not just going to get it by reading it. You're not going to get it by studying it. You're not going to get it by interpreting that. It must be revealed by the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. And so when he started coming out there, even when it was cold, I would go out there and sit. I didn't eat my lunch with the, with, 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 with the phone of the crowd. I would prepare my lunch. I didn't go out nowhere we could afford it. I would take, as my natural brother would say, my sandwich. And I would take my sandwich to work. And I would go out there because it was a long way in that big building. You get to the dining area. Uh -uh. I wasn't going to waste that much time walking out there. I would get my sandwich. And the, and the platform of the building had about that much concrete from the building. I would sit there and put my back there. Even if it was chilly or cold, whatever. Huh? And I would go out there every day. And I would take that book and I would read, I would study. And then when I would come home, I right, need to clean up and mow the grass or wash dishes or clean up the bathroom, whatever. I did that. I have my woman. And then I would go in there and, and play me some, some hoop a little bit. Do that. That's what I would do. And I'd come home and study a little bit and even have time for television and all those things. He's like, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 And that's the truth. Because of that, then you was able to, he was able to bless. It opened up my understanding to things that, that uh, I don't hear many men speak in the simplicity that I teach them. Or they know it, but they don't know the simplicity of it. How about that? Hallelujah. It began to open my heart to many things. To wonderful things. I would hear men say things and I say, wow, they, ooh, that is, wow, ooh. I can't wait that for home and look at that. They didn't even know what they said. I would hear men quote scripture, they didn't even know what, the, 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 they didn't even know the detail of it. And I would go home and just open that book and pull out my strong concordias and look. And if it took me an hour or two hours, that's the truth to find that one verse or find it. <coughs> we got time to be silly, don't we? We don't have time to love. We got time to hate. We don't have time to love. I'm moving on, Yisrael. Can I? I shall. And he said, we shall take this three-day journey in the wilderness and Zerach to Ya Ar Abba. He said, as who? Not as Pharaoh asked for commanding me. He says, but as Yah has commanded me. What was the Zerach for? The offering is always a sign of the Sadiq judgment upon a nation people, Yisrael. And that is what the Zerach, the offering, this thing that, uh, that took more than just an offering from one's heart. That's what it entails. That's what the Zerach and the Zerach it entails the same thing that the judgment of Yah rests upon a people. And so we know that we have done wrong before Yah. We can't allow the daily offering to be taken from us. We know that we have sinned and fallen short. I say to myself, you all don't want to hear what I say to me. And many times I'm by myself in quietness and I preach and talk to me constantly. It is what energizes me, it is what motivates me, it is what gives me strength. And I don't play around, Yisrael. I don't play around. I love my Isha. She knows not to get out of hand. Because I don't play that. 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 I don't give a damn how you feel like I love you. I don't give a damn what your pre notion or preconceived notion of what love is. I will show you how much I love you. And after I've done all I've done to get us right, then I will love you. How about that? Hallelujah. 
Yeah. It's a man. Hallelujah. I'm going to call Zakei Rabbi. Zakei. Zakei. Call him. That's all right. Call him loud. You hypocrites. You're so false. We are false. I don't mind telling that because uh, we'll tell you that story one day, all right? How about that? Hmm? All right. Moving in the process of Torah. I have something here that would excite us, Yisraya. This is the utterance of <coughs> Yasha, out of the book of Yasha, 71.13. He said, this says, Yah, out of the book of Jasper, Yasha. He said, this says, Yah, the Almighty of your ancestors. Is not Yah the Abba, the book of Jasper? Is he not the Abba of our ancestors, of Abraham, Yishak, and Yaakov? Is he not the Abba of our ancestors? He said, I will tell you what Yah says. He says, throw away every man, each man, the abomination of his own eyes. Throw that away, men. Throw that away, Ish. Get that out of your ru'ah. It's vile, it's filthy. He said, tell every man to throw away the abomination of his own eyes. And do not defile yourself with the idols of Misrim. That's why Moshe had to get out. Were they not defiled with the idols of Misrim? Sure they were. When they came out, did they build them a golden calf? And say, we will say, this is the Elohim that brought us out. This is the God that delivered us. Did not they say that? Did not they eat and drink and they rose up to play? Did not they rise up with all of the falling and the scorning unto God? So man, get the abomination out of your eyes. You will have the sin of your sons, your wife, your daughters. That is an encrypted message of hell. That of this beast spirit that has captivated you, man. It's wrong. It's not of you. Get the abomination out of your eyes, man. Hallelujah. Yeah. And do not defile yourself with the idols, the lust, the love. You can grab and scan and get excited about the world. And yet we don't, we don't rejoice in the things of God. We get happy about the trinkets of the world, but we don't rejoice in the abundance of Almighty Yah. We get happy about, about a few dollars, but we don't get happy about the riches, the extra, the happiness, the blessings, the fullness of God's riches to our hearts when He speaks to us. We don't get happy about that, but we get happy about a damn suit or, or, or some damn clothing and say, look at me, I look fine. We don't look fine. Hell, I don't care what you wear. That's so that I can put it on look. They, that individual looks better than you in that. And that's a fact. The damn stupidity of our mind. It is, a, it, is, it is a senile workings of this metastasizing of this ovon, this Torahless yeah. mind yeah. that is taking control over you. That your whole body, your mind, body, your strength, your heart all resists Yah. Yeah. That you're not compelled to repent when what is desolate, what has become desolate, when the ruins are there, they don't repent. And they continue to do the same thing over. They have no offerings unto you. So he's warning us now. He speaks his warnings unto Yisraya. You hear the Torah of Yah? Heart not you, love in the days of provocation, but make Teshuva repent. That you will have not, not repent of the matter again. Tell him you're wrong and you're sorry. Offer up the dam of your shoe, Hamashiach. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it's done through the verbal offering of a, a sack of the zabak unto Yah. You understand that we offer unto Omar Yah. Yeah. That's how we do it, Yisraya. Not the way that seems right unto you. Your way is an abomination. 
You need to clean your eye and your spiritual concept uh, of what is acceptable unto you. It, uh, it, uh, it is the power of this beastly nature, this mark, uh, whereby the beast is, uh, he is uh, engraving that tendency uh, in your mind. Uh, he has established his constitution uh, in your heart uh, that even when the Torah of Yah speaks judgment, uh, stand up, praise me, because uh, I'm showing you of your desolation. Uh, we abandon that. We become more seated in our ways. We become more asinine, more hardened in our own actions, in our activities against Yah, against Yisrael, uh, against uh, the throne of His Hasid, His mercy. And there is no repentance in us. We do it. We sin without conscience of our sin. We do things that are so vile and so wicked, uh, and we're not conscious of that. We steal, we kill, we hate without even having conscience of that. You know it's wrong. Yes. You know it's wicked. Yes. And the sad thing he has to tell us over and over again. You know there's something juvenile. When you correct a wise individual, they become wiser. Yes. You only have to correct one, one time when they're wise. And they go from there. You don't have to tell me things over and over. You don't have to tell me things over and over. I've always been that way. You tell me, well, did you forget? No, I don't forget. I don't forget. I hate when someone tried to confront me. Well, I told you then I say, man, you can't even remember. Let me ask you this. You remember what we talked about yesterday, what, what I told you? Hell, you can remember that, but you can tell, remember what you told me two months ago? Get out of my face, man. Don't try me that way. You can remember what happened two days ago? I dealt with act like that. Well, you said that. Don't tell me what I said. You listen to me. When I tell you things, I say it over, listen, this, I say it over and over and over and over and over. I do that for a person because I watch the spirit of men. I watch the spirit of women. I'm not stupid. You are stupid. We are dumb as hell. My people are sottish. We are damn dumb people. And our damn pride exalts us. My people are destroyed. For the lack of knowledge. Yeah. They're savage, we're stupefied, we're dumb, we're stupid. We let our air lift us up. Well, I heard what you said. No, no, you didn't hear what I said. Because I know you didn't hear what I said because now you're defending you. But a man began to defend him, I know he hasn't heard what I said. I don't care who, who, who the hell you right. I say things to people and I say it because in the old days uh, we could read between the lines. You know what I'm saying. Somebody said, come on, in the world that you were in, uh, I was on the fringe of that, in that world, uh, world hustling uh, and, and making a dollar here. Come on, I know where you came from. You knew when you said something, even though you didn't say it straight out, you know, boy, you know your boy knew what you were saying. He knew exactly what you were saying. Because in the days, he could read between lines. He knew what you were saying. He said, I got you. What did he say? You got it. You knew exactly. Your boy could say you a thing, uh, he could talk around, he could talk around others. Uh, it would be so encrypted, you wouldn't know what he is saying. Sure you did. And Yah speaks to Yisrael, Yah Madhul Ruach, and we don't even know what he is saying. Yeah. He speaks to his house. He is not speaking to the world. He's not speaking to the nations. He's speaking to Yisrael, yeah. The abomination that make it desolate. The abomination that caused death and ruins to be marred, whereby there is no power to, to, to draw yourself unto you, where there is transgression, a willingness, a destitute of the mind, a desolation of one's conscience. There is no thought of Torah. There is no thoroughness in our actions toward you. We have abandoned him. Our thoughts are not upon him. We don't think of the things that are pure, the things that are right. We don't think on those things. He needs to preach that again. The same message again. The same message again. The same message again. And bring it out detail by detail. Talk to me, Israel. That's how you do it. Bring it out again. That's what an evangelist does. He goes to the same place and preaches the same message. If he comes so thorough with him, he preaches one time here. He may go there tomorrow and preach the same thing. Go there and next day preach the same thing. Go there and preach the same thing. When he comes back here, he can preach it again and it sounds totally different. Yeah. Why? Because it's more enlightened. It's more detailed. It's more enriched. I can preach the same thing over and over. I do preach the same thing over and over. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Every word of yours is of great detail. That's why we have to understand everything. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. I want to close with a few more scriptures. Katuv, and I'm, I'm going to continue from here. Listen. We must understand, Yisraya, that if this mind promotes and conjure up things that are devious, that we cannot offer unto Yah the Zabach, the daily offering that we should. We will rise, we don't, oh, you say it, we get up grumpy as hell, wicked. We don't offer unto Yah the daily offering that is accepted. Come on, Yisrael. Come on, Yisrael. We're lethargic, we're morbid, we move with no energy, we move with no excitement. There's no spray for Yah. But hell, let us go down to the nick of dying. You get ready that night. Talk to me. Talk to me, Israel. Let's go to the free market. Let's go there. Hell, we're ready. Two days before it's time to go. That we said, I was glad when they said, let us go. He was ready. Just, just cry the hell. Let's go into the house of Yah. I want to close with two verses here. It says again here in the book of Mishri, hear this, Yisraya, Proverbs 15, 26. It tells us that the mach'ash'aba, or the thoughts, the very plans, the purpose, the devices, the thoughts, the inventions, the purpose, the will, the mach'ash'aba, the thoughts, the desire, the passion, the thoughts of the wicked, of the Rasha, criminals that do not obey Yah, criminals that will not obey Yah. He said they are an abomination to Yah. Even the thoughts, even the thoughts, even the thoughts that have been created by this beast, even the mark of her thought. What are the markings of the thoughts of this beast? It is one that rejects Yah. It is one that denies Yah. It is one that transgresses against the Torah of Yah. The thoughts of the wicked or the Rasha, it says it is an abomination to Yah. But the words of the Tahor, of the pure, they are pleasant words. That's what Yah delights in. When those that are not the word Tahor, it is those that are ceremoniously clean. And when one is ceremoniously clean, only then can you offer up the true offering unto Yah. That's why we have all against Yisrael. We should lay our gift down at the altar and go get it right. We are damn stubborn. We are wicked as hell. If I got something in my lamb against my Aka, I must lay the Gemuel, the gift, the very prize of your down at the altar, at the feet of your shoe and go and get forgiveness, get it right with this Aka. I don't care what I thought in my heart, I must get it right. Yeah. Get it right. Because that gift will not operate. It will have no power, no function at all, Yisraeli. So even the words of the Tahor, they are pleasing to the ears of Yah. Tahor will ceremoniously clean, we're cleaned. And that simply implies we're able to offer up the daily Zabach. We can offer up the daily Zabach of Torah and priests of Yah because we're filthy. Our minds, we have been filled with the excretion of this wicked cup of the this holy spirit that we wander our minds wander among the idolatrous activities that we participate in things that are against young against vile unclean things rituals and 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 acts and deeds of worship that we don't even know that it is worship Israel, because we're ignorant my people are selfish we are stupefied people we are dumb when it comes to the ways of Yah. we are wise to do evil but to do tough is not found in us we will conjure we will contemplate things that are evil with right to do right according to the Torah we don't know how to do that. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 I want to close with this one and then I got too much. I can't let this go aside. And you know what? I know what I will do when I begin to study on this week to come. I know that I will probably come in here with a different message because I in my mind. It works like that all the time. It's hard for me to go back. To, it's hard for me. This has been a task for me. 
to teach the way I've been teaching or preaching or hollering or whatever. That has been a task because it's just not the way I operate. It's just not. Hallelujah. I want to close with this from the book of Sharach. The wisdom of the wise orator of the institution of Yah's prominent school of learning in the high place of spiritual intellectual. He says to Yisra'iyah, and I want to close it because next week I want to show us something that is even more simpler with much profoundness, esoteric to the revelation of the matter. Shirak says, I want you to understand, Yisra'iyah, that the children, the babe, the taf, the offspring of sinners, they are abomin abominable children, they are pitbull, they are filthy. That's why Shaul says unto Kuratya, he said, no, my ach, macho. He says, by your set of partners, that your child is made clean. And even the husband, the same thing likewise, unless they were unclean. You understand? And that's why you, Ema, you can't be a damn false hypocrite. You are, can't be a hypocrite. You hide your sin, and your wicked ways in your bosom. You can't be a hypocrite. You can't be a damn pretender. You must be real. He said the children of the sinners are abomination. Everything that is abominable, it shall be made desolate. The children are desolate. He said the children of the sinners are abominable children, and they are accustomed to dwelling with the wicked. When you find children that are filthy, they love wicked ones. They love dwelling. They love talking. They love living. They love playing. They love the activities among the wicked. Those children of sinners, they love the vile things, the unclean things of the earth. They love that. They do. So the children of those that commit chata, ah, they are abominable before Yah. And you will know their identity because they love the fellowship with the Rasha, the wicked criminals against Yah. I conclude on this day that the mark of this beast and this spirit and of man, it shall cause desolation in the mind if we do not hold fast to the Torah of Yah. We must hear Yisra'iyah. Yisra'iyah is Icha. This is Ah, the first ha ah, mitzvah. This is the first command. Mitzvah. It is the first command. It is. He is ichad. He is ichad. He is one. And we are one in your Shia Hamashiach. We are the same body. So we are one. I don't say that this arm, um, this wrist is hurting a little bit. I don't say I don't need you because I need this wrist. I'm going to need this on uh, tomorrow. As we split some wood, it's going to be cold tonight and tomorrow. And I got to split wood. And even if the old wrist hurts, I got to split wood. May the riches of your rest upon Kol Yisrael, you are friends, our neighbors that have joined us. May the strength of your fill your bosom. May he cry unto you his delight on this Shabbat, this Shabbaton. As we prepare ourselves here in Teshua for the Pesach of Almighty Yah, let us turn toward Yerushalayim. In all things, Yah, we barak you this day, strengthen your people, correct us, Yah, judge us all. We are in need of your judgment. We are all in need of your correction. For there is no great one in this Biyat, for we all lease among each other. Hallelujah. And yeah. so in any greatness, we are able to serve each other above all things. That is the true sign of greatness, that you're able to serve those that you think are not as great as you. So help us to serve Yisra'i, Yah, above all, serve you, Yah, and to love you with all. Give us wisdom, understanding in this teaching as we go. Barach, your people, cause your barachaya to flow upon them in your shoes, my name, and teach us and guide us in the power of your imats. And the blessed assurance of the name of Yoshua HaMashiach, for we need you. God, your people, take them safely home, protect them. Those that join us, 
grant unto them the blessings of their home, yeah. to the healing of their issue. We pray also for our precious Akhwari and his issue. Rose, touch them there in St. Louis, Missouri, and all of your people. We ask these riches of your blessings and the blessed assurance of the only name, Yoshua HaMashiach, with our voices and with our heart, we do rock you. And our voices cry, Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Amen.